Good morning and welcome to Tuesday, September 20th. Time for another edition of the 359 Podcast, CNET's official unofficial morning show featuring <laughs> Roger Chang and Alfred Ng. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everyone. We've got a lot to talk about. Pack show. Uh, we'll be talking first. Google finally confirmed their October 4th event. We're expecting a, a new phone as well as more details on Google Home. Uh, we're also going to be talking about Comcast confirming that uh, next year it'll launch a wireless service. Kind of, They've tried this before. It didn't work so well. Uh, we'll see if they actually get it right this time. Uh, and lastly, a story that Alfred wrote about uh, the London mayor in town to sort of drum up support and to reassure people that, that Brexit isn't going to have an effect on, on tech, the tech world, the tech hub that is London, right? Yep, pay, pay no attention to this uh, giant gaping hole we have from our plans. There you go. Uh, so, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Our producer, Brian, will pick out the best, and we will try to do our best to answer them all. Whenever you're ready. Let's start recording. And in three, two... Welcome to the 359, where we talk about the top tech news of the day and all the other crap we want to throw in. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Alfred Ng. So Google has confirmed October 4th as its next big event. We're all expecting to see the debut of the rumored Pixel phone. Uh, It's the first time it'll actually go away from the Nexus franchise, which has really been with Android since almost the beginning. Um, So Alfred, what do you think? What is your idea of the perfect Google phone? What do you want to see in this phone? Um, I'd really like to see this phone, uh, you know, be affordable, seeing that it's the uh, spiritual successor of the Nexus line, which, you know, was touted on being affordable. Um, From what I've heard, though, this is uh, not going to be at the same price line. Yeah, I mean, I think they've been trying to get away from the idea of a Google or Nexus phone as a a low-cost device because of the association that low-cost, while good value is, it's not quite on par with the super phones that, that is the Samsung devices or the Apple devices. So, uh, it's looking a lot like these Pixel phones will be more definitely more flagship level devices. It's disappointing because you know I do believe that you can be affordable and right. a flagship device, but I guess um, no. I think they they had a hit on their hands with the Nexus Four and the Nexus Five. These were phones that were uh, both solid. Uh, LG made them, but very affordable, um, especially if you weren't looking to sign up for a contract. But they hit at the right time, I think, because people were starting to understand that they're spending way too much phone on, too, way too much money on contracts. That uh, these phones were an affordable option. So, I don't know what what are some of the other features you want to see. Um, I'm really hoping that the Pixel does have kind of a connectivity feature to um, laptops, right? Where it can be docked to it. You know, um, with Chromebooks being able to. Uh, I mean, not being able to, but just moving toward more uh, Android apps. Yep. yep. I'm hoping, you know, the the Pixel will allow me to plug it into a laptop of some sort and just run yep. it on that instead. Windows phones do that now. Some of them, at least, the mm-hmm. higher-end ones. But, of course, no one cares because no, yeah. no one buys them. <laughs> so, uh, moving on, Comcast, uh, Comcast CEO Brian Roberts confirmed today that starting sometime in the middle of next year, that it'll launch a wireless service. Uh, it has an agreement with Verizon, so it'll be using Verizon's network, but it'll also augment the service with sort of the span of local Wi-Fi networks in its market. So, I don't know, Comcast has tried this before. It hasn't worked so well. What do you think? Are you interested? I have no doubts in Comcast's ability to you know connect people. I think it's more so they're, they've got a really bad reputation as far as customer service goes. Sure. Um, I mean, this is we're talking about a company here that, you know, it has its own Wikipedia article for criticisms, not <laughs> not a section uh, an an entire article dedicated right. to just, you know, how it's the criticisms against Comcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, it's uh, it, it's tough. I mean, they've they've done this before. The, the cable companies have tried a couple of times to launch their own wireless service or you say Sprint's network for the wireless service. It's never worked uh, for whatever reason. It seems like logically it would make sense. You do a quadruple play, right? Home mm-hmm. home connection, phone, internet, TV, and wireless. But it's never really, it's really never came together. Mm-hmm. All right, lastly, you wrote a story, Brexit. Yeah. Um, well, the mayor of London, uh, Sadiq Khan, came to New York City yesterday to, you know, basically tell U.S. investors, hey, don't worry about Brexit. There's nothing <laughs> going wrong with this. Um, which so far he's been right about, you know, they've right. been getting the same amount of investors, same amount of money, same amount of tech companies. Sure. London is still the best city for, uh, you know, tech startups to grow in. For now. For now, uh, because Brexit, 
Bre- Brexit's effects have not uh, even have not taken place. Right, yet. they so, actually haven't any enacted any of the process in place to break away from the so EU. So we it, don't know. It seems like he's kind of scrambling right now to you know get all these investors in and tell them, hey, look, there's nothing to worry about right. uh, before you know its impact actually happens. Yeah, we'll see. Brexit's going to take a little while. Uh, for more about these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Alfred Ng. Thanks for listening. And that's a cut on the podcast recording. All right. First and foremost, Gulam, thank you for your interest. We aren't gamers. The Macs come free from work. <laughs> <laughs> if, um, if they gave us the choice, it would be a different story. Uh, but yeah, we work for I CBS. Know. I would actually, I don't know what I would For choose. some of us, it might be a yeah, different yeah. story. Wait, we yeah. we everyone, don't have a choice? Everyone we always don't. is like, why you guys use Mac all the time? Because CBS gives it to us for free. It gets everybody on the floor for free, and it's not up to us. And it's not, by the way, it's not because Apple gives them to us. We just buy, our as a company... We supply Max. We we use Max, so yeah, yeah. And be honest, we could probably all benefit from something a little more powerful on the desktop. But we're floating around with these airs, and they don't cost us a dime. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind using a Surface actually, at least on the road, not not in the office. Maybe but, they uh, give them to us to prevent us from putting games on them. That it's oh, probably a really that's good a really point. good point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, productivity is already pretty low in the CNET office. <laughs> I wouldn't brag about that, Brian. I really wouldn't brag about that. Oh, come on. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. A little bit. <laughs> so what, uh, any questions or comments? Uh, in particular, I mean, like the Google's coming up. The Pixel phone is, is I'm sure, it's stirring up some interest. Uh, we definitely have Pixel uh, anticipation. Uh, we have some Nougat fans while oh, we're yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we have a bunch of Apple haters. Go figure. Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of interested in the new google phone although i yeah. do kind of hate that that twitter ad that they rolled because it's so avant-garde and vague and uh hashtag game of phones yeah yeah well they gotta they gotta try to do something different i guess i don't whatever. i don't know whatever yeah it is what it is but i mean it could be really fun like I, i'm a heavy google user yeah um i am too as is the rest of the internet and the well, rest of this office is <laughs> very we're, true we're, very we're true google shop i mean it's cliche to say but uh at this point, I am very disheartened by the forthcoming iPhone headphone mm-hmm. nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, Not yeah. forthcoming; it's out. Uh, but yeah, this might this might steal me away. Yeah, I mean, if you're look, if you're a viewer, are you uh, is a Google phone attractive enough that it might lure you away from from your iPhone love, especially now after headphone jack gate? And is that is that a gate? I don't know. I don't think it's a gate yet. But yeah. I mean, I had, a, I had a Nexus 5 for three years. I bought it, like, the moment it came out oh, yeah. because of how affordable it was. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, I mean, I agree. That's the most disappointing part is that this isn't going to be an affordable phone. They tried that last year with the uh, the Nexus 6P, right? That was more I the completely skipped phone. that, too. The uh, And the year before, it was the Nexus 6, I believe, that was Motorola's phone. It was like a, it was like a jumbo phone. Yeah. Uh, and that one did not well did not do well because they they priced it at a higher level and they tried to sell through the carriers, which kind of went against what Nexus has done since from day one, really. So, uh, here's a question. Yeah, not really a question, but more of a a wish list. Uh, somebody wants a physical keyboard again. It looks like, you which know, is an interesting. Know, Blackberry thought. makes a phone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I Blackberry it, makes an Android phone. But this, would Google consider something like that? Also, while yeah, we're at it, yeah, there's, there's so. no like market demand the, for the that. The market it's is very... so so niche. I mean, there there is market <laughs> demand, but it's just like it's five people. Yeah, I was one of those uh, for a while too. I I just did not want to make the switch because it, it's so easy to type. On. Yeah, no, it took me a while to switch over to a full touch screen. And even when I had an iPhone or an Android device, I kind of missed having a full keyboard. I used to write whole stories yeah. on my phone. I mean, I can still kind of do that, but it's a lot tougher now. I just enjoyed being able to text while walking because I never yeah. had to look down. It was great. Although now uh, I, I know folks your age who are actually able to do that sort of blind typing on their screen. I don't know how that even works, but physically they kind of know the placement of the finger on the screen to get the right letter. You'll get there eventually, Grandpa Roger. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, I'll probably go see now before that happens. <laughs> uh, what about what if Google follows suit and that, the headphone jack starts going away on other models that aren't Apple. I I would I think that's going to be a distinct possibility. I, I think USB C Intel has already touted that uh, that port as a alternative to the headphone jack. And the reality is, a lot of these companies want to get their phones thinner, want to pack in more for their phones, whether it's battery, whether it's wireless charging features, whatever it is. Uh, and that headphone jack is takes a bit of extra real estate and can be removed. So 
Uh, sorry to break to you guys, but I think that's that's sort of the future of where these phones are going. And in related news, that would be a high. We got repeat people in the chat room wishing for better battery life in general, which I think most mobile phones at this point can benefit from. Absolutely, um, as long as they're not exploding. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's and that's not exactly better, but battery life. No, it's not. Well, I mean, that's the thing was the Note Seven was it wasn't supposed- exploding because the battery was really good though. No, no, well. Arguably, they crammed in a bigger battery into the phone, and, and the act of cramming it in might have triggered the the actual friction that yeah. was setting off the explosion. I don't know. I'm just I'm just speculating, but um, yeah, I, I would agree. A bigger bigger battery or bigger battery, longer battery life, uh, definitely are key for uh, for any new phone. I mean, you saw with Apple, they they tried to spin it with their processor plus the bigger battery. Um, I still think they could have done more with that, but. That's just me. And as far as the uh, headphone jacks go, uh, if they are removing it for USB-C on the uh, Pixel, yeah. all I can ask is just just put two ports so people can you know essentially charge listen to music listen, and yeah. charge at the same time. That's yeah. kind of a big concern. You don't have a dongle that splits it into two things. It's just, just put two ports. That you see it on laptops all the time. Yep. I don't see why. And and you know that you can't argue. Oh, it's the space issue with that because the rest of it is just dead space on the right. Yeah. And it's physically. I mean, they're physically smaller. You can easily pack in two or three. Just go or wild. Go, ooh, <laughs> don't go crazy there. Cool it. Yeah, man. Uh, let's speculate on pricing. Oh, uh, which is a bold statement. I know. Yeah, but. yeah. Let's go. Let's go crazy. Let's just start throwing Over out numbers. Prices right. A million. No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I would say right around the 650, 700 mark. That's sort of the the sweet spot for flagship phones. The iPhone 7 starts at 650. Yeah. Uh, Samsungs are around the same price. The Note 7 was like I think it started at like 800, 900 dollars. So, you know, there's there's some wiggle room there, especially if it's a premium device, right? Yeah. Do you think Google might try to beat the curve? Because somebody's saying in the chat somewhere in the 400 to 500 dollar range. I mean, that brings it back to that Nexus range. I think mm-hmm. the original Nexus 4 and 5 were around $400. Uh, no, Nexus 5, I, I bought mine for around like 250 to 300 okay. All right. So maybe it's a little bit higher price than that. But uh, I feel like that is the territory of like mid-range phones. Like you can get a decent $400 phone now. And I don't know if Google wants to be in that pack. I think they want to be, they want to elevate this phone to something that's slightly better than your standard uh, ZTE or like Alcatel mid-tier phone. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tala says Pixel laptops were expensive, so they're speculating that yeah. the p- phone will probably follow suit. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the Pixel laptop or Chromebook was really, I felt like it was more like a concept uh, than anything. Like, you could buy it, but it was crazy expensive. And I don't know if anyone actually really purchased that thing, right? Like, it was just sort of like, here's what we could do with this super awesome screen and, you know, all the, the bells and whistles for a Chromebook. But it wasn't really that much better than a standard Chromebook, which cost, what, $150, so, yeah. no. So here's our standing wish list for this Google phone. No hiss. No <laughs> yes. Ex- no explosions. And uh, well, Headphone jack. The bar is very low right <laughs> Head- now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A standard headphone jack, some kind of water resistance, and moderate price. Yeah. That's what I, we got I going I don't on. think it's going to hit all of those. I, I think you'll get maybe <laughs> three out of five. Um, waterproof, I don't know, water resistance. That's kind of like the standard now. That's kind of why I didn't mention yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it is. It it seems like a standard, but there are a lot of phones out there that still don't have it, right? Like a lot of high-end phones. Yeah. Like LG still doesn't do it. I mean, I think Sony, Samsung, and Apple now are the only three that yeah, really but do it. Yeah, I, I think it's starting to become like the, the standard of it, you know? It, I would hope it, it is. It becomes a standard, but I just don't, I'm not sure if it is yet or if the industry has got in their mindset that it should be you know yeah. that it's it's a perk as opposed to a standard. So I don't know, we'll see. I mean, what about a, carrier deals? That's the big controversy, right? Like, uh-huh. will, will will Nexus or I'm sorry, will this Pixel phone be sold through carriers? Will it be sold through Google's website, through Google Play, which is sort of the the, the standard model for Nexus? Um, you know, the, the few times they've tried to sell these things through the carriers, they've they failed. Mm-hmm. I think it was the Nexus Six, the original Nexus One, I think, sold through the carriers as well. It was a mix, and it just it didn't do well, right? So, I don't know. That's the that's I mean, the road. I, I know that was a big selling point for the Nexus Five that you didn't have to do a whole carrier deal with it, and it was right. unlocked for anybody. Right. So, but the the rub there, it's this uh, dilemma that they have. It's it, yeah, it's really attractive if you want to sell unlocked through Google Play, but a vast, vast, vast majority of people buy their phones through carriers, and that's a problem, right? Like if you don't go through that channel. 
you're not going to sell a lot of phones regardless. Like mm-hmm. the Nexus 4 and 5 did rel- relatively well, but that's, they, they weren't selling as well as like an iPhone did because they didn't have the carrier channel. Uh, who in the chat? We're curious. Uh, how did you get your mobile phone? Assuming you have a mobile phone, I don't know. Maybe many maybe. people who don't at this point. But uh, did you get it through Carrier? Did you buy it standalone? Did you get it secondhand? Uh, light it up in the chat. Tell us. Also, on the other topic, would anyone want to sign up for a Comcast wireless service? Like, no, I really. Want- yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. All right. Well, nope, that nope, ends nope. that conversation. Hashtag, nope. Uh, wow. So much hate for Comcast. They're not ha- even have in- you used them? No, because they're not on well, our market. That's I don't I don't have. I'm not the, the wireless thing. in general. Have you experienced that company? No, that's I've never been in an area where I was off. Yeah, I, I feel like Comcast has only been you know successful because it's you know this is the only cable yes. network in your area. Yeah, I yeah, mean yeah. to do it. on Well, a, that's really the story for all the cable companies. Yeah, right? but that's to, why they're I'm all saying hated. that's why I don't think it'll transfer translate over to a mobile network because you know there's so many other options where right. you know why would I ever sign up for this company that gets all these negative reviews? Well, if if. Uh, if you're in the Comcast territory, I mean, they can offer you theoretically a bundle of services. If you're already a Comcast video and internet subscriber, tack on this wireless service for like 40 bucks extra or something like mm. that. That to me kind of makes sense. If you're a, if you're a Comcast, if you're an existing Comcast subscriber, not, I don't think they're winning over anyone new. They're not going to be like, I'm not going to switch from T-Mobile or Sprint to Comcast for whatever yeah. reason. But if I'm already a customer, maybe, I would consider it if they gave me a break. I don't know. We got a lot of people in the chat who do get their phones through the carrier, trade-ins, etc. Yep. Uh, Austin is actually uh, a user of Comcast Xfinity and has nothing but nice things to say about it. Yeah, actually. Let's try to be optimistic. I have not had the best experience. Okay. I've never right. used it. I've never used it either. But uh, I know Maggie uh, Maggie Reardon, our, uh, our, our FCC reporter, as well as covering uh, issues with cable, uh, she actually had a lot of complimentary things to say about the X1 platform, uh, and she noted that, like, eh, relative to other cable companies, it's actually pretty innovative. I mean, that's a low bar you're clearing there, but, like, you know, if you're a Time Warner cable customer, you're probably less happy than you are as a Comcast customer. Like, I, I've had Time Warner cable. Yeah, Time I am Warner. not a big fan. I'm, I'm like, barely home, so I, I pretty much just got, like, the bare minimum. Of, that's, uh, that's what I had when I was in my 20s, too. <laughs> I have a 50-50 down, uh, package with Verizon now because all I do is stay home. So. <laughs> <laughs> and right there is probably a good point to cut it off. Yeah. We got to move on. We got to move on. Um, thanks, everyone. If you liked or if you liked anything you watched or heard here, check us out on CNET. Our podcast is also available on iTunes, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, TuneIn, and FeedBurner. See you all tomorrow. See you.